Hello, my name is Clayton. It is 5 a.m. I have not slept. I can't do anymore. Can't sleep anymore. I don't know. Just never gonna do it again. That's fine. But let me tell you, a new era is here. The age of slow, of waiting for things to come around is over. The time of investing forward to create faster growth is here. Currently, I'm doing a Prime 95 Intel burn test. It's a stress test for processors. It, uh, it goes through all these tests that uh, stress test, and the goal here is to see how hot it runs. My hottest core, core number two, 63 degrees Celsius, which is really good, because in theory this is, this is full load. My processor is happy, but you know what? My processor is slow. Lots of things are slow. The internet in the place that I live is too slow. That's what we're talking about, man. We're getting out of here. Here's the plan with the computer, because I need to edit videos faster. I need to be able to run Apex Legends while streaming for even more entertainment value. I need to be able to look up cat videos faster. I need to be able to play RuneScape while I'm streaming Cyberpunk. Unfortunately, we're gonna get nowhere close to that. Right now I have a 1050 Ti, an i5 like 7600, Cabby Lake. I think my plan here is I'm going to upgrade my RAM, possibly my GPU, and I'm going to overclock this bit. So in theory, we're gonna gain some performance. On at least this Intel processor, I can go into BIOS and I can just go ahead and automatically overclock it to 4.2 gigahertz. That's cool. But we're not a freaking casual, okay? We're gonna have to crank it past 4.2. Like generally when people hit the silicone lottery, like 5.0 gigahertz is like the max that seems achievable on your average processor. I'm gonna go ahead and shut her down. Then we're gonna relaunch and uh, get to it. Tap delete. We're in. To continue off our other video, basically, I have come up with a solution. So I'm going to upgrade some major components here. So here's what we got. New motherboard to support potentially more things, specifically RAM for now. 32 gigs of RAM. It doesn't light up, nothing fancy. And then an Intel i7. Unlocked. 3.6 gigahertz. The idea here is I'm going to pull out, uh, my GPU isn't here yet, and it's not gonna be here until about a week, because I had to buy it off of eBay. So I'm lucky to even see it that soon. Bought a used one, we'll talk about it later. We're going to pull the motherboard out, swap my heatsink over on a new processor on the new board, and then uh, put it back in, then put my GPU in, and um, that should be it. In theory, we'll fire up a new computer with a new processor, and it'll run really well. I just bought a new way. Spend a couple thousand just to cruise it. Shawty said she love me, but it's fresh enough to prove it. I never tell her, but I put it in the music. Well, that's okay. All I want to do is make it. So, there we bring the bad boy front center. Don't forget to smash sub. So, this is what we're working with in here. Currently, don't even have a full board. Got a micro board. So, that's a change. This is the cooler, Hyper 212. There's my little super clock, <laughs> 1050. Gonna be uh, replaced quite soon. So, mainly just this area is gonna be the big change. Hopefully, we can uh, get it all unplugged. And the nice thing about wires is they are metal, so they tend to have a memory. So, they'll kind of remember where they go. And since I'm just having an upgraded version of the old MSI board I have, uh, I'm hoping it'll be similar. So, first major uh, issue that we're uh, that I'm noticing is this is probably this is where the motherboard's going to mount, and if you trace that up, this is going to be an issue. Other than that, all of this cable management is going to have to change. All right, well, I'm going to start uh, unplugging some stuff here. My car people, I know you know what this is. It's a pocket screwdriver. If you don't have one of these, you need one. It's the 11th finger. So that helps me uh, undo those clips. Pull out. Yikes. 
So, nice thing about working with silicone parts, silicone, they bend, not break, in theory. Mm, I'll probably remove this fan to get myself in the lecture room. Probably not really a big deal to do. And I'll probably want to reposition it anyway with the new motherboard. So that's out of the way. So now we have more room to pull the motherboard and work in there. Should be fairly easy. I believe that leaves everything unplugged. Which I think means we can lay this down and uh, remove the motherboard. I think my motherboard is only held in with two screws. Can you believe that? Let's see if I can actually do it standing up. Uh oh. Oh, my GPU is still warm. That's funny. So, just the GPU is supporting it then. Well, I guess we can just release it. Out comes the GPU. My little itty bitty 1050. Out she comes. The guts are out. The GPU lays. And there lie my computing power. So I am going to have some issues here. Uh, since the board will be running all the way out here, it's basically going to be cutting these two wires off. Um, so those are going to have to get routed on the outside. It's not a big deal. My cable management is terrible. I should really address it. So typically this is the messy side of the computer, the back side. So what's making this such a mess and so complicated is my fan splitter. That old motherboard only had a couple buses on it. So, I don't know if this new one is going to have enough, but it might. It might. Not much to my surprise. Probably going to be redoing a lot of this. Uh, again, additionally, if we have better fan control on the motherboard, then I might not need to worry about this splitter and stuff, but it's all just a mess and it's all just to get fans and RGB. So we're going to go ahead and remove our CPU cooler here. So I wear um, gloves to insulate. Uh, I think it's a, a better way to do it. It should insulate any static electricity that might uh, be lingering. There's our stuff right there. So, yeah, this is a little weird. It's a, a little socket that's driven by a screwdriver. Probably because you don't want uh, any more torque than you have to on there. It should come right out. Okay, so there's the, there's the support. So, there we go. Pulling that right off. Okay, so there's our cooler. So we'll clean that off in a second. Our old one, see how our processor was doing. There's our processor. So we say adios to the old board. Hello to the new one. Now, remove the new board. Oh, beautiful. Oh, smells good. So here is our brand new baby, baby, baby. Okay, that should fit like that. I'm just hoping that this RAM is going to clear this frickin' thing. So it looks like it's giving me a clue here saying 
the opposite to first. No doubt exciting. I mean, that's all that comes in the box. So we're gonna put that aside until we're ready and uh, get these riser screws in there. Uh, these are flat on one side to make it easier to go in, which I did not realize was a thing. Protective covers off. Now it's time to place the CPU. So you see this little, uh, where is it? This little triangle in the corner. That is going to match up with a dot that's on this corner. Doing my best to touch it as little as possible. And we're just gonna put it right where it's supposed to be. And just close, oh wait. Just close our little gate and then with the pressure of this she's held down so that surface looks very very clean to me so typically isopropyl alcohol uh, can be used to clean off thermal paste I think it's time to go ahead and lay on the thermal paste so I got this Arctic uh, MX4, Arctic Thermal Compound, so I like it. I think we're okay here, so I'm just gonna do, that's probably plenty right there. And once that's all good, I'm just gonna go ahead and place that right on top of it. So it's okay if it moves around a little bit. It's going to anyway. And we can get each one of these threaded. Okay, so, <laughs> so tightening it on this side definitely adds a lot of pressure, which is exactly what we want. So to start that one even, I'm gonna go ahead and use the tool. The cooler has slid around on the surface plenty. Like a little bit of twisting's okay and whatnot. I mean, you don't want a ton. It's gonna disrupt that, that paste. But what we're looking for here is just to get it tight. It's gonna be a lot of pressure and I'm gonna go in a sequence. So I don't really care what it is you're, you're tightening. In my opinion, going in a sequence is always a good idea. Okay, that one's bottomed out, as is that one. So I don't know if you can really see on camera, but I don't love that actually. Just make sure all of them are snug. And then just kind of make sure that's nice and secure. So now it's wanting to move the board rather than that. That's the scary part. The scary part's done. And I think that went flawlessly. Just be uh, very surgical when you do it, you know? Precise, clean. So strangely enough, it does tell us which RAM slots need to get filled first, and it opposes, and it's these two. So that's a little bizarre, but now there's a slot, and that slot is offset. So all we have to do is open up our little things, make sure it's facing the right way. It should pop in. Ugh. And uh, yeah, so these are DDR4s, 3200 megahertz, so relatively quick. Ah, oh, shit. Hold on. Uh-oh, we might have a clearance issue. Actually, I may have to remove it. First, and then actually put this on first, and then I think it will actually fit no problem. This is scary, I don't want to bend these fins. Ugh. As long as it's not really blocking any airflow, 
I'm not really going to care. Alright, so that's going to conclude part one of this build slash upgrade. And don't forget to come through for the second and probably third part. If you enjoyed it, let me know. Leave a like, leave a comment if you have something to say or ask, and subscribe if you want to see more. Obviously, I can't do PC building stuff all the time because I am not made of money. I do a lot of uh, gaming related stuff as well, so check that out. I'll see you later, gamers.